According to Einstein, space and time are not separate, absolute entities, but rather are woven together in an inseparable fabric, space-time. There's a quantity that's known to be invariant, the space-time interval, sometimes called the Einstein interval, that represents your combined motion through space and time together. Put simply, if you're at rest and your spatial position doesn't change, then you're moving through time at the maximum allowable rate forwards at a rate of one second per second. However, if you're in motion and your spatial position does change with time, then you move through time at a slower rate as objects in relative motion experience the phenomenon of time dilation. The faster you move through space, the slower you move through time, up to the absolute limit of how fast it's possible to travel the speed of light. As you approach that ultimate limit, your motion through space gets faster and faster, while your motion through time gets slower and slower. If you could actually reach the speed of light, which is a physical impossibility, unless you're a massless entity, you'd find that time appeared to stop for you and wouldn't pass at all during your journey. In theory, if you could move faster than the speed of light, you'd become a tachyon and would indeed experience time running backwards. However, this possibility is an unphysical situation as tachyons do not correspond to anything that exists in physical reality. While the motion of any real entities through the fabric of space-time is limited by the speed of light in a vacuum, space-time itself is not required to be flat and unchanging like a three-dimensional Cartesian grid. Instead, according to Einstein's general relativity, it's possible that space can evolve. And as part of that evolution, it can be curved, can expand or contract, or could even create and maintain a connection between two disparate points within it. That last possibility was formulated way back in the 1930s by Einstein and his then student, Nathan Rosen, and was originally known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge. This is traditionally visualized by reducing the number of dimensions from three to two and treating space-time as a two-dimensional sheet. You can imagine, just as you can imagine folding a flat sheet of paper atop itself, that two points that are well separated by following the sheet itself can be connected in some higher dimension, in this case the third dimension, that's normally inaccessible to someone confined to the two-dimensional sheet. This property of space-time, a fascinating theoretical possibility, is arguably the most important concept when it comes to the science of time travel. Many have often wondered what happens when you fall into a black hole, a region of space that has so much matter and energy within it that any light emitted from that region, as well as any matter or radiation that falls into that region, can never escape, no matter how much energy it has or how fast it's moving. Even at the speed of light, nothing can escape from within the event horizon of a black hole. Normally, we assume that these black holes lead only to a central singularity and that as you approach it, your destruction is inevitable. But there's another possibility that black holes, if you enter them, actually connect to another region of space-time. If, instead of a positive energy density, like standard black holes possess, that connected region has a negative energy density, it would become a white hole, meaning that you could enter the black hole end and emerge on the other side through the white hole end, journeying through a hole in space-time from one end to the other. Although we don't yet know about the existence of physical white holes within our universe, they're certainly allowed solutions in general relativity and are just the time-reverse solution of a black hole. But what we do know exists within our known universe is this, tiny, minuscule quantum fluctuations that cannot be avoided, occurring all throughout the fabric of space-time, most prominently on the smallest of scales. These energy fluctuations, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, can occur equally well in both the positive and negative directions and can often occur in very close proximity to one another. These fluctuations are expected to be random in nature and often include disconnections and reconnections from the original positive and negative states that typically initially occur together. In theory, a very strong, dense, positive energy fluctuation would create curved space in one particular positive fashion, while a strong, dense, negative energy fluctuation would curve space in exactly the opposite negative fashion. If you were to then connect these two positive and negative curvature regions together, you could, even if just for a brief instant, arrive at the notion of a quantum wormhole. 
Imagine for a moment a particle drifting in the vast expanse of space. It encounters a quantum wormhole, a bridge created by these contrasting energy fluctuations. The particle enters this ephemeral tunnel, disappearing from its original location in space-time. Moments later, it reappears in an entirely different part of the cosmos, as if it had teleported. That might be great for the possibility of sending a single particle from one event in space-time to another, which could allow that particle to leave space-time at one location and moment and re-emerge at a different location and moment, including moments that may correspond to earlier in time than when the particle first exited space-time. If we want to scale that up, however, to allow something like a human being through, that's going to take some work. Every known particle and quantum in our universe has always been shown to possess positive energy and either positive or zero mass. The negative energy and or negative or imaginary mass solutions have not yet been discovered. Although we should all note that it's eminently possible to have negative mass energy particles in the framework of general relativity. There's nothing forbidding it. If we want to create a physical wormhole for a human to potentially travel through, that's our first order of business, to postulate that this negative mass energy matter exists. While we know of black holes in the universe, entities that were formed out of positive mass energy, we'd have to postulate the existence of white holes as well. Entities formed out of negative mass energy. Imagine the possibilities if we could create both a supermassive black hole and the negative mass energy counterpart to it, a supermassive white hole. The black hole would act as the entry point and the white hole as the exit. Connecting these two cosmic phenomena could result in what we've been seeking all along, a traversable wormhole. But how do we get there? The first step is to find or create negative mass energy matter. This would require advancements in our understanding of quantum fields and perhaps new breakthroughs in particle physics. Theoretical models suggest that negative energy could be created through exotic states of matter or even harnessed from quantum fluctuations. Once we have this negative mass energy matter, the next challenge is to stabilize it. Current theories propose the use of advanced technologies such as quantum stabilizers or gravitational wave emitters to maintain the integrity of the wormhole. The final step would be to connect the black hole and white hole forming a stable traversable wormhole. Why is a traversable wormhole so important to the idea of time travel? Because once you've created the two ends of the wormhole and forged and maintained the connection between them, then no matter how far apart you subsequently take these two connected objects from one another with sufficient mass energy of both the positive and negative kind, this instantaneous connection will eternally remain. But it doesn't stop there. By leveraging the laws of special relativity together with this general relativistic phenomenon, we can extend it to traveling through time as well. Whenever you travel close to the speed of light, you experience a phenomenon known as time dilation. Your motion through space and your motion through time are related by the speed of light. The greater your motion through space, the less your motion through time becomes. From special relativity alone, if you got into a spaceship, traveled very close to the speed of light towards that star, then stopped, turned around and returned back to Earth at that same speed, you'd find something odd. Due to time dilation and length contraction, you might reach your destination after six months and then age another six months during the return journey. But back on Earth, a whopping 81 years would have passed. Everyone you've ever known would have aged tremendously, and it's very likely that everyone you knew before leaving would be long gone. This is the standard way time travel physically works. It takes you into the future. But if you were to construct a wormhole like we just described, with a supermassive black hole and a supermassive white hole connected by some type of bridge, the story changes in a profound way. We can imagine the same exact scenario as previously, where we leave Earth at close to the speed of light and travel to a destination that's 40 light years away, but in such a fashion that only tilde six months of time pass for the people on board the spaceship. Only this time, because we created a wormhole previously, we can imagine that we left one end of the wormhole close to motionless, such as remaining back near Earth, while the other one was taken along that relativistic journey close to the speed of light. This creates a fascinating paradox. Now, instead of returning to a future Earth where decades have passed, 
you could theoretically use the wormhole to bridge the gap instantaneously. By entering the wormhole at the distant location, you might emerge back on Earth almost at the same moment you left, or perhaps even before you left, depending on the specific conditions of the wormhole's creation and movement. Join us next time as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos and delve deeper into the paradoxes that challenge our very understanding of existence.